I'm Pastor Steve Williams, and this is Gospel of Deliverance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive of His wondrous Word. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to hear Your Word, to be in Your presence, to feel Your power. God, we ask that our hearts and minds be stayed upon You and upon Your Word as we should at all times, that we may be strengthened, that we may be led, and Lord God, that we may prosper by your word. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Today's Bible study is being happy and having joy. And we're going to begin with the word happy. And our very first verse is in 1 Kings 10, 8. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 8, happy in hearing wisdom. Happy in hearing wisdom. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee and that hear thy wisdom. We can take this directly as from Christ that we are happy. And we are happy being his servants because we stand continually before Him, and we hear His wisdom. That is what true happiness is. That we are a servant of Christ, and that we continually stand before Him, and we receive of His Word. We receive of His wisdom. It's a life source for us. We cannot make it one single day without hearing His Word. We grow in danger of becoming thin, and not just thin, but undernourished spiritually. We become parched and dry if we do not have His Word daily, if we do not have it upon our breast, we become weakened. Friends, we have to have the Word of God to truly be happy. We cannot be happy without His Word and without being before Him, our Savior. Let's go to Job 5.17. Job 5.17, happy in being corrected. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Oh, the thing that we don't want to think about. The part of being happy that we don't want to contemplate. Being chastised, being corrected of God. We're supposed to be happy about it. And we should be. We must be happy. Because we are going to spend our Christian lives being corrected by God, being chastised by Him because we are His children, and no child should be left to his own very long. Why? Because all manner of mischief will ensue. And God is on us like a marvelous parent. A caring father is He, and He makes sure that we toe the line. I'm talking about that plumb line. God wants that plumb line followed inch by inch and does not want us veering from it at all. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Friends, today we've got to be happy in being corrected, happy in the chastisement of Christ Jesus. If we can learn to be happy as we are corrected by Him, then we will be happy at all times. If we can be happy being corrected of God, our Savior, then we can be happy through the worst of trials, the worst of attacks by the enemy, the worst circumstances in life, losing our finances, our home being taken away, loved ones dying. We can survive it all with our head up high if we can be happy in the chastisement of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here is one that many don't think of, but is so true. Happy with children. Happy with children. 
Psalm 127 and 5. Psalm 127 and 5. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. The happiness of rearing children and bringing them to that place of maturity. They shall be a blessing to us because we are leading them in the way of Christ Jesus, because we are leading them in the paths of righteousness. This is what truly makes us happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our next verse is happy in works, Psalm 128, verse 2. Psalm 128 and verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. When we put our hands to the task, whether it be to the natural, to produce enough funds for us to partake of, to eat of, or whether it be in the spiritual realm, in the gospel of Christ, if we labor and we eat of it, we bring produce forth, we shall be happy and it will be well with our soul. Glory to God in the highest. Friends, think about that. We will be happy as we work. It should not be a downtrod spirit in us when we are working for the Lord in any means. Whether we're a janitor, whether we're working on the garbage truck, whether we're working in the office, or we're working in the church, or we're on our knees and working in prayer for Christ, we need to be happy. We need to be happy because God has said that we are fulfilled in that work because we're doing it as unto him, not unto man, not to please man, not doing it because we fear man, not doing it because we fear that we're going to lose everything we need and want, not in fear that we're going to be poor, but instead we are going to be happy we're going to eat the labor of our hands, and we will be, and we will be well in our soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It makes me happy as I begin to think about these verses. Happy being in covenant with God. Psalm 144, 15. Happy being in covenant with God. Again, that's Psalm 144 and verse 15. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. They are in covenant with Him. Friends, when we go into covenant with God Jehovah, when we are in covenant with Him, we are genuinely happy. We're happy because we have proclaimed that Jehovah is our Lord and Savior. We are happy because we are in covenant with with him. We have proclaimed that we are his people and he is our God. And that makes us happy. Puts a smile on our face. Hallelujah. No time for our heads to be dropped down, but we need to lift up our heads. We need to look up to the hill whence cometh our help. We need to be in joy in happiness in the Lord. Hallelujah. I know you're going to say, but that's just kind of Pollyannish to believe that we can be happy all the time. Friends, all I'm doing are reading the verses. I'm going to leave the humanity portion to each of us for us to be corrected of God, for us to correct ourselves, that we cannot base our happiness and our joy upon what is going on in the carnal, in the natural, that affects us and those around us, a city, a state, a country, or the globe. We cannot base our happiness on that. If we are, we will be disappointed constantly. The new car will grow old. The new house will grow old as well. The new clothes will wear thin. The new shoes 
the soles will wear and we'll have to get a new pair. The money that we got on payday will dwindle away. And yes, even that that you have saved may be eaten by the needs of life, regardless of how strict you've been. Friends, God sometimes chastises by taking away from us. You say, well, that doesn't sound right. Why would God take away from his dear children? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, happy we will be, friends, when we understand that being happy is because God, Jehovah, is our Lord and Savior and nothing else. Not the gifts that he bestow on us, those are not what make us happy. Not anything that this world can offer make us happy. It is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Happy in keeping God's law. Happy in keeping God's law. Proverbs 29, 18. Reading in Proverbs 29 and verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. When we keep the law of God, it makes us happy. When we err from his law, we become destitute. We become skittish. We begin to hide. No differently than Adam and Eve did when they had sinned against God. They tried to hide their sin instead of confessing openly. We never hide anything from God. He already knows it, but we've got to come before Him and say, Lord, I want to keep Your law. Put me in that spiritual place where I will strive to keep Your law at all times, in all places, in all circumstances, and I will not be happy without obeying Your law. And friends, we can't be happy. We cannot be happy lest we are keeping the law of God. Happy we will be. Matthew 11, 6. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 6. Happy when we are not offended by Christ. Happy when we are not offended by Christ. Listen to this verse. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. What a statement by our Savior that you're happy if you're not offended in him. So many people are offended by Christ. So many are unsatisfied. They're ashamed to proclaim Jesus in front of people. Well, I don't want them to know. They may just throw out the general term, well, I'm a Christian, but they won't denote that I'm a Bible-believing, full gospel, cover-to-cover -cover Christian. And I won't back down with it one moment. Not going to stop. I believe that the Holy Ghost leads me every hour of every day. I believe that Jesus is my friend. I believe that the Word of God is all true. Every last syllable is true and perfect. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have exactly today what God wants us to have. Man did not write it, but God wrote it. Man did not think of it. It's God's from all eternity past. For Jesus is the living word. Friends, we are blessed when we are not offended in Christ. When we're not offended of who he is, that he does chastise that he does correct, that he wreaks vengeance against sin. Never be ashamed of who Jesus is. Praise God. Next, we're going to be talking about happy in knowledge and our obedience to Yeshua. Happy in knowledge and our obedience to Yeshua. 
The Gospel of John, chapter 13, 15 through 17. John 13, verses 15 through 17. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Happy are we if we do them. If we follow God's instruction, if we follow the examples of Jesus Christ. So now we have God's Word fully exampled, fully demonstrated by Christ right here on earth. And all we have to do to be happy is to do these things. To be about the Father's business, to be gentle and kind and meek and lowly, carrying the burden. We do that and we will be happy. When we try to get out from underneath the burden of the Holy Ghost, we will find ourselves unhappy. We will find ourselves that we are not in a place of peace. Because to be, in, to be happy before God means to be doing His will. Amen? The Lord wants us to be happy. And he knows the way for us to be happy is by doing his will, by following his examples. Let's never be satisfied with anything less than to be happy in the Lord. But let's pursue that happiness. Amen? Let's pursue that happiness. James 1.25. James chapter 1, verse 25. This is happy to continue in the commandments of Jesus happy to continue in the commandments of Christ. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He's going to be blessed. He's going to be happy in his deeds. As we look into the Bible, the perfect law of liberty, we continue in it. We do not divert from it. We do not veer off the path of it, but we are not a forgetful hearer. Instead, we are a doer of the work. When we're doers of the work, we shall be happy as we work. We shall be happy. Not somewhat happy, but we will be happy. It is a foregone conclusion. We will be happy if we do what God has told us to do. And that means that we have to be attentive. Christian, we must be attentive to Jesus at all times, and we will be happy. You want to be happy in work? Be happy in Christ. You want to be happy with your family, with the burdens of rearing a family, the finances, the taking care of what he's laid in our hands. Don't be ashamed of him. Do not be ashamed, but friends, let's make sure that we take care of everything, continuing in Him and doing that blessed work, the happy work. Praise God. James chapter 5 and verse 11. James chapter 5, and we will be in verse 11, happy to endure. Happy to endure. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of tender mercy. We're going to be happy to endure the hardships of life, happy to endure the chastisement of our Lord, happy to endure the trials and the testings, happy to endure the battles of Satan, happy because we know that God is merciful to us. We know that God has grace aplenty. We know that God loves us, and He will not fail us. He is our Savior. Let us be happy in Him. Happy to go through the things of life that seem so difficult, the deaths, the loss, the financial struggles, the spiritual battles that we will face, problems here and troubles there, but we all have that friend. Oh, what a friend we have, and he's always there, willing to take 
all our care. Let's cast it all on Him. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We need to be happy in reproach for Christ. Happy in reproach for Christ. 1 Peter 4.14 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. For their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Glorified. Hallelujah. Friends, let's take glory in the fact of going through reproaches, that we're going to be ridiculed mocked, and even the simplest of just being made fun of. We're going to go through it, but He's glorified. He is glorified. Our final verse in the category of happy is in Revelation 16, 15. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15, happy to keep watch. Happy to keep watch. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Think about that. We need to realize that we're happy as we watch. We keep our garments. We keep our garments upon us. We keep our garments clean. Glory to God. And hallelujah to our Savior. For he keeps us happy keeps us happy because we keep watch. And much of that happiness that we have is simply keeping watch before the Lord. And now joy. Joy in the presence of Jehovah. Joy in the presence of Jehovah, Psalm 1611. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Never doubt that we have so many pleasures, eternal pleasures, that are ours. They belong to us. God has shown us the path of life, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Joy, cheer, cheerfulness, joy exuberance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Joy in sacrifices. Joy in sacrifices, Psalm 27 and 6. Psalm 27, 6. And now, shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me? Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Sacrifices of joy. Sometimes it's not easy to be joyful. Sometimes it is not easy to keep our head lifted up, and that's when it requires a sacrifice of joy. Those sacrifices of joy are some of the sweetest praise that we can give to Jesus. Those sacrifices of joy. We need to be ever about bringing that gift of joy to Christ Jesus. If we will, not a day, not a day will be wasted. But every day will be full of joy and happiness. And we will be producing for his kingdom. And we truly will have a bountiful harvest in eternity. Psalm 30 and 5 Psalm 30, verse 5, joy follows God's chastisement. Joy follows God's chastisement. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Friends, as we have disobeyed, as we've erred, as we've made a small mistake, whatever it may be, God chastises. He corrects us, but joy comes in the morning. Never fear. God does not leave us alone. He does not leave us in a great and mighty burden, but instead that joy comes in the morning after chastisement. Hallelujah. 
Joy comes in the morning. Friend, take our lumps and know that joy is coming soon. It's just round the corner. God has corrected you. And now joy is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 126 and 5. Psalm 126 verse 5. This is about reaping in joy after sowing in tears. Reap in joy after sowing in tears. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They shall reap in joy. Glory to God. Mm, isn't that beautiful? We sow in our tears. We reap in joy. So if you've been crying over a circumstance, if you've been praying for someone and it's brought you to tears, maybe they've been struck down with COVID-19 and you've been praying for them and tears came, don't worry, friends. Joy comes from those tears. We have planted in tears and we harvest joy. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3 this is about joy in salvation. Joy in salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. With joy, we're going to draw out of that well of salvation that God has placed there before us. Let us draw heartily. Let us draw consistently. Let us not let a day go by without drawing from it, and let us not go an hour of thirst, never being parched, never being dry, but constantly seeking the well of salvation, drawing forth from its greatness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our final verse for today is Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Romans 14 and 17, joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory to His eternal name. There is joy to be had in the Holy Ghost. From the moment that you are conceived in the Spirit till the last breath you take in perseverance in this life, there is joy in the Holy Ghost. There is no need for sadness and sorrow. It shall not remain, my friends, for joy in the Holy Ghost will bubble up. It's going to bubble in our souls because it's a spring a wellspring coming up, and it will not cease. Praise God. Hallelujah. That happiness, that joy, being happy, having joy, there's nothing like it. And there's no reason for me and you to be sad. No reason for us to bow our heads in defeat. But instead, let us lift up our heads into the victory that Jesus has for us, that Jesus has ordained for our lives. Victory in Jesus, our Savior forever. He's already sought me, and He bought me with His redeeming blood. Praise God and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we all want to be happy. We all seek joy. But today we have studied how we truly can be happy and how we can truly have real joy. Lord, we now know and we understand that it is not from the world. It is not from things. It is not from ownership. It is not from possessions. It is not from even the fine gifts that you give us in the natural, but it is you. It is your gospel. It's your law. It's your ways. It's your righteousness. It's you that makes us happy. It is you 
that gives us joy. And we pray today that all of us leave this meeting with happiness and joyfulness. That all of us go forth from here happy and with joy. To spread it abroad to every believer and to tell every sinner that there is a way to be happy and have joy in this life and it not be transitory and it not be based upon the things because it's based upon the Lord God Jehovah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We pray all of this by your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I pray that Christ's richest blanket of blessings of happiness and joy are yours today and forevermore. Goodbye. God bless. Thank you.